Salutations. It's been a while. I um, want to thank the people on Patreon that have stayed with me. My friend PC for filming this and editing this. And um, I wanted to go over a few things, alright? It's kind of turbulent times, it seems like, amongst the UFO community and the New Age community. I mean, people are suing each other and saying stuff is not real and it's just really a trip. And it kind of sucks because what it does is it muddies the waters as monk contactees for the scientific community. And I think that sucks. But it is what it is, and we're going to step past that and look at something else. <coughs> um, excuse me. Something else I wanted to mention is that I'm going to be participating in speaking and doing some work at a conference uh, being hosted by Journey to Truth, Aaron Kuhn and Tyler Koala. Um, it's going to be in Grafton, Illinois, or as some people around here say, Illinois. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be in Grafton, Illinois, May 22nd to the 25th. And I'm really honored to be a part of that. And I think it's going to be a nice uh, conference. I didn't know how many of those I was going to do. I've had some kind of negative interactions with some of that conference circuit stuff. So I didn't know if I was going to do any more, but I'm honored to be a part of this one. So I'm looking forward to that. If you're somebody that can make it out, come hang out. You know, it's normally the attendees that are even the better contactees or better knowledgeable people than the people they're presenting. So that makes it cool. And that's what it's all about is the interaction. Anyway, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, something I wanted to talk about, all right, is that you already know that I'm trying to always compare and look for similarities in my contact experiences with science. And I take that very serious because it gives us a foundation and some of these things, especially that it's a good basis and a foundation for it. And I look for when actually technology emerges that conforms to things that have happened during my contact experiences. So right now, what I've been looking at recently, about the last year now, is this thing, the Xenobots. And at first, you know, I didn't pay a lot of attention because there was like a... It was like a cartoon when I was a kid, the GoBox or something like that. It just makes you think of that. But in reality, when you look at these Xenobots and what they are, all right, is that they are cellular robots to a degree. They've taken the skin, embryo, skin, and, um, uh, hold on, let me see. Um, I say skin and stem cells from the, oh, the name of it, Xenopus larvae <laughs> sorry it's a it's a green frog from africa it's the stem cells of that that they're using with the skin cells to actually make these in the formations to make these robots these these organisms that are actually these organisms biologically that are also self-reproducing and self-repairing so that right there takes it to a whole nother level <clears throat> all right when saying that and when i've been talking about the contact experience for a long time I've been talking how, actually, what the craft I've been on board are these craft that are able to reproduce. That's how sometimes you see these swarms of UFOs and things like that, and how they're biological, and how they're organisms born in space, all right, and how they're grown over the Mako. I've talked about this quite a bit in several videos, so some things I won't go in here into now. Go back and look at some of these videos. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. We're having a bad storm here. It's really cold outside, like, and uh, I rushed here, so I didn't bring my pictures. I forgot my pictures I always show. But one video to go back and look at is called the Anti-Gravity Room. And what that is is this room that looked more like a, almost a cargo bay of types. And I talked about in that video how this space was, first of all, as big as what I saw in the sky, but how it seemed like it's a place where there could be another, another ship could be born in there or formed consciously you know in that way so anyway this is the dealing with that too and the biological factor so when you take that what i've said about mycelium and what we know about the organisms in space going even back to the bacteria and the things that are collecting on the space stations and the things like that these are the organisms that i think xen our xenobots will start being working with will start you doing that technology wise maybe using fungal Mycenium. These are going to be, I think, the new exploration of space is how we're going to do it in the far future. Because that's what has happened during my contact scenarios. 
and I find it fascinating to see these Xenobots are now actually <clears throat> being shown technically, right, or scientifically and publicly, sorry. And, uh, okay, so I've actually been away for a while, so I'm a little excited, but I'll make sure that I've got everything I'm trying to say here. The Xenobots were developed in 2020 at the University of Vermont, so they're not that old as far as their public announcement anyway. Um, when we think of them being self-replicating and self-reproducing, how they do that, if you take that from the micro that they're on now and more move it to the macro, this starts crossing the lines of what scientifically or sci science fiction we call Bracewell probes. I've done videos on that too. Bracewell probes and Van Neumann probes. And the Bracewell, Bracewell probes, I think, is best illustrated when you think about that extremely long, somewhat boring movie, um, 2001 The Space Odyssey. That monolith, the monolith like one comes to the moon and one comes to the earth. But it's waiting for us to become a type one type of civilization and it starts making contact, allowing us to become part of galactic citizenship. That's what that movie's really about. So, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when thinking about that, think of that and a Van Neumann probe is actually similar to Bracewell probe, but that is also self-replicating. It's more one that is self-replicating. And um, I think Von Neumann probe, like the Berserker probe, can consider it to be dangerous. Anyway, just scientifically speaking, in science fiction, how these things manifest into reality. So I just want you to be aware of these xenobots and how they're right now being used for surgery and different things like that. But I think the next step is these become part of space exploration when dealing with the fungal and the different types of organisms they can use to actually harvest and make these xenobots. So we're going to go somewhere else, especially those when we look at the things that have already been tested in space. The bacteria that's been tested in space comes from space. They're finding that out. I think even in that... Uh, was it a comet fragment they found that uh, the salt? Or is it a Mars piece? I can't remember now. But anyway, um, I think, think we'll leave it there actually. Look up molecular mechanisms of um, microbial survival, sur survival, survivability in space. You'll see a bunch of these different organisms that they're representing that are uh, actually either coming from space or can exist in space. That's where we're going to go with this, I think. And just take that, go back on the channel, look at all the videos I've done over organic UFOs, organic craft, the craft I've showed, I've shown illustrations of them, and see how this ties in. And it's good to use this in science because it keeps, it takes it more power, more seriously than this whole thing I'm seeing going on in the community that discredits a lot of contactees. And I'm sorry, it's terrible to see that. But that's why we have to have some science because the science community won't take us serious if we can't back some of these things up like what I'm trying to do here. And then it's taking a step forward. That's how we become a type one civilization with the representing on Star Trek and stuff like that. It's, you know, that's really where we're, where we're at right now with this. So anyway, um, <clears throat> my, my deal here was really just to turn you on to this information. Some people have been complaining, oh, your videos are too short. Sorry, the videos are designed to spark you to do your own research, not just for what I know. Then that's just much more that people start repeating what I'm saying like a parrot because I don't know that much anyway. So learn it for yourself and do your own research. Um, um, quickly, the reproduction on the conscious level, just address that again real quick and in outer space. How I think that is a part of this and how the xenobots are doing that. So pay attention to all these things and kind of use this to take this a step forward in the contact experience. Please subscribe. Um, I appreciate all the people on Patreon that have stayed with me. I've been away for a while, so thank you. And um, all the people that have kind of promoted me to keep doing these videos because I wasn't going to do them anymore. So I appreciate you all. Please press the button and hit that bell. And so you get notified when I put something else out. A lot of people have to do that again. Do it again. Hook it up. Peace to you and happy holidays. Later.